Despite the daily occurrence of accidents and tragedies in our world, human resilience often takes center stage. In the face of harrowing incidents that appear to defy survival, some individuals not only endure, but also become living testaments to life's mysterious twists and turns. Join us as we explore the remarkable stories of 20 people who have triumphed against the odds and have lived to share their incredible tales. Number 20. Janelle Guzman McMillan Janelle Guzman McMillan's remarkable story of survival during the 9-11 attacks is a testament to human resilience. While working on the 64th floor of the World Trade Center's North Tower that tragic day, she and her co-workers decided to evacuate as the building trembled. However, as they descended the dark stairwell, the North Tower collapsed, separating Janelle from her group and trapping her beneath the rubble. For an agonizing 27 hours, Janelle remained buried under debris, becoming the last survivor rescued from the wreckage. She endured a nightmarish ordeal with a crushed leg, burns on her face, and her head wedged between concrete pillars. Determined to survive, she summoned the strength to free her head, even at the cost of losing much of her hair. In her darkest moments, Janelle turned to prayer, driven by thoughts of her 12-year-old daughter who needed her. As despair loomed, a voice named Paul reached out to her, offering words of encouragement and hope. Eventually, a rescue team defied the odds to reach her and extract her from the rubble. Though her recovery was challenging and required over a month in the hospital, Janelle emerged with her leg and her life intact. Number 19. Terry Wallace Terry Wallace's coma story is a remarkable journey into the mysterious realm of comatose experiences. At just 19 years old, Terry's life took a fateful turn in July 1984 when he was involved in a car crash that sent their vehicle plunging into a creek. The exact cause of the crash remains shrouded in uncertainty, but like many teenagers, speeding might have played a role. Tragically, Terry's friend lost their life in the accident, while Terry himself went missing, only to be discovered two days later in a coma. For 19 long years, Terry's family, including his wife and six-week-old daughter, faithfully stood by his side, offering unwavering support. Then, on June 11, 2003, a remarkable moment occurred. Terry uttered his first words since the accident. His initial word was mom, and from there he gradually progressed to form complete sentences. This defied common beliefs about comatose patients losing their memories. In Terry's case, his memories remained intact, but he was utterly unaware of the passage of time. He found it hard to grasp that it was already 2003, having missed significant events such as the presidencies of Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush, the entire Clinton administration, the September 11th attacks, and the Iraq War. Despite the passage of nearly two decades in a coma, Terry was faced with another challenge. He remained paralyzed. Nevertheless, he exhibited the ability to communicate coherently and express himself in full sentences. Medical experts considered Terry's awakening a miracle and studied his case with great interest. They believed that Terry's brain had undergone a remarkable process of rewiring during his 19-year coma, and it was only when enough neural connections had been re-established that his consciousness returned to the waking world. Number 18. Roy Sullivan Roy Sullivan, an American park ranger, dedicated 35 years of service to Shenandoah National Park from 1942 to 1977. What sets Roy apart is his extraordinary claim of surviving not just one, but seven lightning strikes, each etched vividly in his memory. In 1942, Roy's electrifying saga commenced during a thunderstorm in a fire lookout tower, a structure strangely lacking a lightning rod. Lightning struck him just a few feet from the tower. Fast forward to 1969, Roy encountered another lightning bolt while driving along a mountain road. In 1970, lightning struck him for the third time, this occasion in his very front yard. But the most shocking episode unfolded in 1972, when a double lightning strike occurred inside a ranger station, as if nature held a grudge. Unfazed, Roy continued his dedicated service to the park. In 1976, his hair caught fire during yet another lightning encounter, marking the sixth strike. Surprisingly, 1977 brought his seventh and final lightning encounter while fishing in a freshwater pool. Remarkably, Roy's wife also had her own harrowing lightning experience. 
Roy's frequent lightning encounters are utterly baffling, considering that the odds of being struck by lightning in an 80-year period stand at a mere 1 in 10,000. His incredible tale underscores the astonishing power of nature, leaving us both bewildered and amazed by his extraordinary journey through these electrifying encounters. Number 17. Truman Duncan In 2006, Truman Duncan faced a life-threatening situation. While working as a railroad switchman at the Gunderson Southwest Rail Yard in Cleburne, he fell from a moving train car. He clung to the car but was trapped under it, and then the unthinkable happened. He was run over by the train, weighing over 20,000 pounds. Miraculously, Truman remained conscious throughout this horrifying ordeal. He used his cell phone to call 911, calmly explaining his dire situation. Emergency responders took a grueling 45 minutes to arrive, during which he battled pain and fading strength but stayed connected with his family. Upon reaching the hospital, Truman was in critical condition, but doctors fought relentlessly to save him. He underwent 23 surgeries in four months. While the accident could have taken his legs, pelvis, and kidney, it didn't take his life. Number 16. Fred Hirsch. Fred Hirsch, a celebrated jazz pianist, moved to New York at just 21 years old in 1977, establishing himself as a prominent figure in contemporary jazz. In the 90s, he bravely shared his HIV-AIDS diagnosis with the world, becoming an advocate for HIV awareness. In 2008, Hirsch's health took a severe turn when he developed HIV dementia, leading to dangerously low oxygen levels and septic shock. This dire situation placed him in a two-month coma, causing organ failures and immense physical deterioration. After waking from the coma, Fred faced an arduous recovery, relying on a feeding tube for eight months and spending a total of ten months in bed, resulting in substantial physical impairment. Despite these challenges, he persevered, focusing on physical therapy and resuming his piano practice. Fred's coma experience was unique as he remembered eight dreams from that time, which inspired him to create a 90-minute show titled My Coma Dreams, shedding light on the realm of coma and unconscious thinking. Dr. Rita Karen from Columbia University suggests that music, rather than words, may provide insight into understanding these mysterious coma dreams. Number 15. Mikalina Lewandowska in 2011, Michalina Lewandowska survived an unimaginable ordeal at the hands of her boyfriend, Marcin Kasparek. Their relationship had deteriorated, and Marcin, instead of ending it, hatched a chilling plan to eliminate her. Marcin bound, gagged, and tasered Michalina, placing her in a box with limited air holes. He then drove her to a wooded area, buried her in a shallow grave, and added an 80-pound tree branch for added weight all with the help of his friend, Patrick Boris. Throughout this terrifying ordeal, Michalina's survival instincts kept her alive. She refrained from calling for help out of fear. After her captors left, Michalina summoned her courage and strength, freeing herself from the box and grave, eventually getting help from a passing motorist. Marcin and Patrick denied intending to kill Michalina, but admitted their actions. Marcin was sentenced to 20 years in prison for attempted murder. Number 14. Mauro Prosperi During the 1994 Marathon des Sables in Morocco, Mauro Prosperi faced a life-threatening ordeal. The race spanned 156 miles across the brutal Sahara Desert in just six days. On the fourth day, an eight-hour sandstorm engulfed Mauro. Remarkably, he slept through it, only to wake up off course, a dire situation in the unforgiving desert. Race officials searched frantically, but Mauro remained lost, with dwindling time. With limited supplies like a knife, compass, food, and a sleeping bag, Mauro's most critical need, water, was scarce. Humans typically need water within three days, and Mauro was pushing that limit. Desperate, he drank his own urine, used it for cooking, and even resorted to consuming bat blood. To conserve water, he took anti-diarrhea medication. Despite his resourcefulness, Morrow's situation deteriorated. His attempts to signal a passing helicopter failed. Believing the end was near, he wrote a farewell letter and reportedly tried self-harm. Severe dehydration thickened his blood, impeding its flow. Incredibly, Mauro stumbled upon shepherds, realizing he had crossed into Algeria. Over nine grueling days in the harsh desert, 
he shed a staggering 35 pounds. Recovery took two years, but he not only survived, but he also returned to compete in the Marathon des Sables and other desert races, a testament to his exceptional resilience and determination. Number 13, Louis Zamperini. During World War II, Lieutenant Louis Zamperini faced an extraordinary survival challenge. His plane crashed into the Pacific Ocean during a search and rescue mission due to mechanical failures, setting the stage for an incredible ordeal. Stranded at sea for 47 grueling days with just two fellow crewmen out of the original 11, their survival depended on resourcefulness and determination. They collected rainwater to quench their thirst, caught small fish, and even trapped birds that landed on their raft to sustain themselves. In a moment of desperation, Louis devoured all their chocolate but later proved his valor by defending his crewmates during a shark attack, using an oar as a weapon. Despite their resilience, their outlook remained bleak. Their journey took an unexpected turn when they reached the Marshall Islands, only to find themselves prisoners of war under Japanese occupation. In captivity, they endured severe suffering, including brutal beatings and mistreatment throughout the war. Remarkably, despite being declared missing at sea for over a year, they endured their harsh captivity and were eventually liberated in 1945 with the war's end. Number 12. Gary Dockery Gary Dockery's case is a startling tale of resilience and the mysteries of the human brain. A dedicated 33-year-old police officer, Gary responded to a domestic disturbance call on September 17, 1988. In the line of duty, he was tragically shot in the head as he and his partner approached the scene. Despite a surgery that removed 20% of his brain, doctors couldn't risk extracting the bullet fragment. Gary, a hero who should have been back on his feet, instead slipped into a vegetative state for over seven long years. In a poignant family debate about his fate, whether to proceed with a risky surgery or let him peacefully pass away, Gary astoundingly awoke. In the hours that followed, Gary defied all expectations. He engaged in conversations with his family, recognizing them with a remarkable memory. Even though seven years had passed, he could identify his now-grown sons, who were only 13 and 5 at the time of the incident, but had become 20 and 12-year-olds. Astonishingly, he recalled details from his past, like the names of his horses and memories of camping trips. Strangely, he had no recollection of the shooting that had put him in this state, or any awareness of the passage of time. In the initial 18 hours after his awakening, Gary's speech waned, but he remained conscious of his surroundings and was even learning to use a motorized wheelchair. However, his time on Earth was limited, and he passed away on April 15, 1997, due to a blood clot in his lungs. Number 11, Aaron Ralston. The movie 127 Hours may seem unbelievable, with scenes of someone resorting to drinking their urine, carving their epitaph into rock, and amputating their own arm. However, it's based on a true story, and the real survivor is Aaron Ralston. In 2003, Aaron embarked on an adventure in southeastern Utah, heading to Canyonlands National Park. He rode his bike for 15 miles to reach Blue John Canyon. Things took a terrifying turn when a rock above him shifted, trapping his arm between the canyon wall and an enormous 800-pound boulder. But this was just the beginning of his harrowing ordeal. Aaron found himself 100 feet below the desert surface, a daunting 20 miles away from the nearest paved road. He hadn't informed anyone of his climbing plans, leaving him with no means to signal for help. With just two burritos, a water bottle, and some candy bar crumbs, Aaron faced an agonizing 127-hour struggle. During this time, he chipped away at the boulder, resorted to drinking his urine when water ran out, and contemplated the unthinkable amputating his own arm. At one point, he believed death was inevitable, so he carved his name into the canyon wall and left heartfelt goodbye messages to his family. But then something changed within Aaron, and he decided he wanted to live Using meager and inadequate tools, he mustered the strength to break his arms, bones, and painstakingly cut through skin, muscle, and tendon. After about an hour of excruciating effort, during which he lost 25% of his blood, Aaron successfully freed himself. He then proceeded to climb out of the canyon, rappelled down a daunting 65-foot cliff, and embarked on a grueling six-mile hike back to his car, marking the triumphant end of his incredible survival saga. Number 10. Sam Carter 
Sam Carter, a 60-year-old retired baker, was leading an ordinary life until a sudden and dramatic twist of fate plunged him into a coma. The culprit? Severe anemia, a medical condition characterized by a deficiency in red blood cells or hemoglobin. Sam's journey into the depths of unconsciousness led him to a hospital in Staffordshire, England, where he remained in this state for three days. The doctors were not optimistic, giving him a meager 30% chance of recovery. It was during this critical period that Sam's wife received a unique piece of advice from the medical team to play music for him. Taking their counsel to heart, she gently placed headphones on Sam and queued up the iconic Rolling Stones track, I Can't Get No Satisfaction. The astonishing result? Sam's eyes fluttered open as the song filled the room. Upon his recovery, Sam revealed that this song provided him with the much-needed energy to emerge from his coma. While many details of his coma experience remained hazy, Sam distinctly remembered the melody of the song. He also shared that this particular song held a special place in his heart, as it was the first single he ever purchased at the age of 17. It was this cherished tune that gave him the extra push he needed to regain consciousness. Number 9. Greg Rasmussen Greg Rasmussen is undeniably resilient. This wildlife conservation biologist dedicated his efforts to the challenging landscapes of Hwanga National Park in Zimbabwe, where he spearheaded various initiatives focusing on the critically endangered painted dog, formerly known as the African Wild Dog. It's crucial to acknowledge that this line of work demands immense courage and fortitude. However, Greg's encounters with painted dogs weren't the most daunting challenges he faced. In 2003, he found himself in a harrowing plane crash, resulting in severe injuries that left him stranded alone in the unforgiving African wilderness. His rescue was a testament to his sheer determination and will to survive. Nevertheless, the crash nearly cost him his feet, and he required extensive medical intervention to salvage them. As a consequence, Greg is now three inches shorter than his previous height. Number 8. Munira Abdullah In 1991, during a routine drive to pick up her son Omar from school in the United Arab Emirates, Munira Abdullah was in a devastating accident that left her unconscious. Munira, then 32 years old, sustained minor injuries while her son was also hurt. After the accident, Munira received treatment at hospitals in the UAE, the UK, and Germany. Despite doctors' grim predictions that she might never awaken, her family held on to hope. Their patience was rewarded when Munira opened her eyes in June 2018, marking a remarkable moment of recovery. Since her awakening, Munira has been receiving ongoing treatment at a school clinic in Bad Abling, Germany, the place where she regained consciousness after months of therapy. Initially, she could only make limited eye movements and fixate on people or objects. Her son, Omar, was overjoyed to hear his mother making sounds, but it took some time before her words became coherent. Gradually, Munira started pronouncing her son's name, greeted doctors in Arabic, and even recited verses from the Quran. Now 32 years old, the same age her son was at the time of the accident, Munira Abdullah continues her recovery journey. She can communicate her basic needs and emotions and currently resides in Abu Dhabi. Number 7. Bahia Bakari in the grim statistics of plane crashes, very few emerge as survivors, but Bahia Bakari defied those odds. This French woman holds the distinction of being the sole survivor of Yemenia Flight 626, an Airbus A310 that tragically crashed into the Indian Ocean in 2009, claiming the lives of all 152 other people on board. Bahia, a mere 12 years old at the time, became known worldwide as the Miracle Girl, a title that was well-deserved. Bahia's survival was nothing short of astonishing. With very little swimming experience and lacking a life vest, she clung desperately to a piece of aircraft wreckage amidst the turbulent waters of the Indian Ocean. Her ordeal lasted for an excruciating nine hours as she battled heavy seas, often shrouded in pitch-black darkness. Against all odds, Bahia was finally rescued, offering a glimmer of hope amid the tragedy. She was swiftly flown back to France, where she joyfully reunited with her father and the rest of her family. The painful irony lies in the fact that her mother, tragically, did not survive the crash. Bahia's journey to recovery began as she was admitted to a local hospital where her injuries were assessed. She had suffered a fractured collarbone, pelvis, facial injuries, and burns to her knees. Number 6. Vesna Volovic 
While some people don't even survive falls from house roofs or trees, Vesna Volovic achieved the impossible by surviving a fall from an astounding 6.31 miles high. She still holds the record for the highest fall survived without a parachute. Vesna was working as a flight attendant on a JAT Yugoslav Airlines flight when the plane suddenly exploded over what is now the Czech Republic, tragically killing everyone on board except her. An explosion in the luggage compartment caused the cabin to depressurize less than an hour after takeoff, leading to the crew being sucked out of the plane. Vesna's survival can be attributed to a couple of remarkable factors. A food cart pinned her down in the tail end of the fuselage, which helped cushion the impact when it separated and landed in a wooded area near a Czech village. Her low blood pressure and quick loss of consciousness during depressurization prevented her heart from bursting upon impact. Vesna was found screaming for help, and a former World War II medic and local villager administered vital first aid. Despite severe injuries, Vesna Volovic not only survived this unimaginable fall, but also lived to tell her incredible story. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Hey, fellow voyagers, gather around because we've got a tale that's going to send shivers down your spine and leave you questioning the very fabric of reality. Imagine this. You wake up, and it's like you've just had a leisurely catnap, right? But no, you've actually been in a coma for 19 whopping years. That's right, not a typo. This Polish gentleman's journey began with a good old-fashioned car crash that left him in a coma so deep you'd need a bulldozer to dig him out. When the medical crew decided it's time to wake him up, they probably thought they were dealing with a patient who's just a bit too fond of his beauty sleep. But lo and behold, it's 19 years later, and he's like, hey, what's new? But hold on to your hats, because here's the real kicker. This guy claims he was awake the entire time. Can you even wrap your head around that? 19 years of being trapped inside your own body, aware of everything but unable to shout, hey, I'm alive, to the world. Now, we're not saying it's a spooky ghost story, but seriously, how would you feel if you had to binge watch life for 19 years without being able to press pause or leave a comment? We wanna know your thoughts. Drop your mind-blowing theories and wild speculations in the comments below, and let's get the conversation rolling. Number 5. Frayn Salak Frayn Salak's life is a series of astonishing brushes with death, with seven remarkable survival stories to his name. Some view him as the luckiest person alive, while others might consider him the unluckiest. It all started in 1962 when Frayn was in a train accident that derailed and plunged into a river tragically claiming 17 lives. Miraculously, he was one of the survivors. The following year, during his first and only plane ride, he had to jump from a malfunctioning aircraft, but landed safely in a haystack. In 1966, he escaped unharmed from a bus accident that sent the vehicle into a river. In 1970, his car caught fire, but he managed to escape just before the fuel tank exploded. Three years later, a malfunctioning fuel pump sprayed his car with scalding oil and flames erupted from the air vents, but he survived with singed hair. In 1995, he was struck by a bus, and in 1996, he narrowly avoided a head-on collision with a truck, clutching a tree branch over a cliff's edge after being ejected from his car. Remarkably, just two days after celebrating his 73rd birthday, Frayn won a $1.1 million lottery. However, it's important to note that while these stories sound incredible, none of them have been independently verified. Frayn eventually passed away at the age of 87. Number 4. Richard Moyer One early morning in 2011, as Richard Moyer was preparing for work in Newport, Pennsylvania at 3 a.m., he heard his dog barking. Concerned for his dog, he called out to it, only to find himself under attack by a bear. His dog had quickly retreated inside the house, and the bear had followed. During the encounter, Richard was bitten on the back. When his wife rushed to his aid, the bear also attacked her, biting her on the leg. Both Angela and Richard were taken to the hospital for treatment of their injuries, and fortunately they were released later that same day. According to Jerry Fieser, a spokesman for the Pennsylvania Game Commission, black bear attacks are quite rare. Black bears are typically known for their shy and timid nature, often choosing to avoid humans rather than confront them. However, in this particular case, it's believed that the bear may have been a female, possibly protecting her cubs, 
which could have triggered the unusual aggression. Number 3. Sarah Thompson Sarah's coma story is nothing short of astonishing. In early 2012, this 32-year-old wife and mother fell into a coma due to a blood clot in her brain, leaving her in an unconscious state for a full 10 days. When she finally emerged from the coma, the year she believed it to be was still 1998, a revelation that left her family astounded. Sarah explained how she thought her favorite band, the Spice Girls, was still together and was completely unaware of Michael Jackson's passing. However, what truly startled everyone was Sarah's inability to recognize her own children or her husband. In 1998, Sarah, then 19 years old, had given birth to her first child and was still with her ex-partner. So, when her children entered her hospital room, she expected to see a baby, not a 14-year-old. She couldn't recall the existence of her other children and even saw her husband as one of the hospital staff. To make matters more intriguing after her discharge, Sarah exhibited behavior reminiscent of a teenager, throwing tantrums, being rebellious, listening to loud rock music, and experimenting with various hair colors. While it took some time, she eventually began the process of readjusting to her life and, in a heartwarming turn of events, rediscovered her love for her husband. Number 2. Joseph Flavel Joseph Flavel's journey through a severe traumatic brain injury is nothing short of remarkable. Struck by a car on March 1st, his life hung in the balance, with doctors uncertain about his survival. He slipped into a coma, putting his life on pause, and as weeks turned into months, the entire world found itself in the grip of a global pandemic. During his comatose state, Joe was blissfully unaware of the pandemic, but he was not untouched by it. He contracted the virus on top of everything else. His family's concern grew, and last May, when he should have been at Buckingham Palace receiving a prestigious Duke of Edinburgh award for his achievements in sports, he remained in a coma. The turning point in this incredible story occurred just before New Year's when, against all odds, Joe began to wake up from his long coma. While his family couldn't be at his bedside in person, their FaceTime conversations with him, filled with smiles, brought tears of joy. Now 19 years old, Joe faces a challenging road of rehabilitation, but his family is filled with gratitude that he's finally embarked on this remarkable journey of recovery. Number 1. Poon Lim Poon Lim, an incredibly resilient individual, is renowned for his astounding survival of 133 days alone in the treacherous South Atlantic. His remarkable journey began when he was a steward on the British merchant ship SS Ben Lomond in 1942 which tragically fell prey to a German U-boat attack, resulting in the ship's sinking. Poon's survival was made possible by finding an eight-foot wooden raft and some supplies. As his resources dwindled, he had to adapt to survive by collecting rainwater, fishing, and catching seabirds for sustenance. What made his situation even more challenging was his inability to swim, which led him to tie a rope from the raft to his wrist to avoid falling overboard. Despite the vastness of the ocean, Poon had hopes of being spotted by passing ships, but fate seemed indifferent. He encountered an unidentified freighter whose crew saw him but did not offer assistance, possibly due to a mistaken identity. Poon's story is a testament to human resilience, and after 133 days at sea, he was eventually rescued by three Brazilian fishermen near the coast of Brazil. His incredible survival earned him the British Empire Medal, presented by King George VI upon his return to the United Kingdom. Incredible stories of survival often leave us awestruck, and it's true that the will to live can be a powerful force in overcoming adversity. If you or someone you know has been in a near-death experience, please feel free to share your story in the comments below.